Let's switch now to the issues of parties and the federal government's interventions in the period of lockdown. Our attention will be on the federal capital territory, Abuja. We're now being joined on the program by the Minister of State for the FCT, Mrs. Ramad Aliyu. She joins us now from our Abuja studio. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister, for taking time out to come on the program. And there's been a lot of talk about the palliatives. A lot of people were not allowed to go to work, who are at home. And the big question on their minds is whether or not the palliatives are going to get to them. How many households are you targeting? Well, good evening, Mr. Shem. Uh, good evening, viewers. Uh, the, target, the, the targeted households are about... Um, 600,000 households, 100,000 households per area council. And um, that is uh, targeted at the very vulnerable ones in the federal capital territory, both residents and indigents. And um, so far, so good. It has started getting to them, Mr. Shion, because we started from a budget area council where we disbursed yesterday, um, uh, from a day before yesterday and yesterday, we have been busy distributing about 25,000 bags of rice and 25,000 bags of condiments. And we have 10 wards in Abaji Area Council. So giving each ward about 2,500 bags of the rice, and 2,500 bags of the condiment. That is per family now. You will have a bag, five kg of rice and a bag of condiment. And assuming uh, in a house where we have more than a family, one, two, three, four, as common in the rural areas, we also have the structure on ground that will identify the occupants of such houses and the families, because in the organogram, the supervisory body now in the, at the area council level is led by the councillor of the area council, and we have the representative of the civil society organization. We have representatives of the League of Imams. We have representatives of Khan. We have representatives also of the two strong political parties in the federal capital territory, that is um, the PDP and the APC. We also have the women representatives and the youth representatives. And also we have representatives of the royal fathers and the chieftains. Okay, this takes us to the structure and the representative of the civil defense, the uh, um, people living with disability. So in this structure now, we have the composition of the monitoring team that will ensure that the houses are identified without bias and that the uh, palliatives are also served diligently with justice. Also on ground at each of the area councils, we also have 10, uh, uh, in each ward, we have 10 uh, military men, that's men of the Nigerian army, well trained to uh, be as civil as possible, but to ensure that there is um, um, uh, pro adequate protection of life and property of people, especially that before now we have suffered um, heavy cases of um, uh, kidnappers, especially in the difficult terrain areas. So we have them on ground. We also have 10 men from the police force, 10 men from the civil defense, 10 men from the road safety, 10 men from the VIU to also ensure that the road is free. All right. We ensure uh, that Honorable Minister. Shut down okay. of the area council. All right. So let me, let me uh, start by asking you. There are about 6 million persons, about the last count, living and residing in the FCT. Do you have uh, a social register for the FCT? Yes, there is a social register in the Social Development Secretariat that has also, for, before now, been saddled with the responsibility of taking care of the less privileged, uh, uh, the social cases, also the, the um, um, uh, IDPs and people living with disabilities. 
yes, we do have a social register. But most of the people targeted, especially in the villages, aren't completely captured in the social register. So this goes a bit further into the villages and trenches. And this time around, after this distribution, then we'll be sure that FCT does have an updated social register from this exercise. So how many people are captured in that FCT social register? Well, practically now, as we can see, we should have about um, um, 3,000 thereabout. So, but, but as you uh, know, what, again, if you what, capture the, the, the IDPs, if you capture the IDPs and people uh, um, um, uh, living with disability, or can I use, or is it permissible to use the word uh, destitutes now? Most of them are also uh, transcend kind of people. So if you have them today and tomorrow they are relocated to their villages, or uh, uh, one way or the other, they decide to move. Uh, I don't think we'll consider that as a complete, you know, head count that will be uh, uh, very valid. But this time around, we are going into the actual residents, being indigent or uh, non-indigent, to ensure that the real people that are needy of palliatives or government support are captured. Okay, so uh, for a lot of people, some people who are criticizing that some of the palliatives are getting into the hands of supporters of uh, politicians and uh, chairman or allegations of uh, politicians hijacking and taking over the process. So the question of the integrity of the distribution and the disbursements come to the table now. What modality are you uh, employing to ensure that not only supporters of uh, politicians are getting this, that it goes, is fairly distributed. Well, Mr. Shen, going by uh, uh, what you just said, you called it allegation, and it will continue to uh, um, um, uh, exist as allegation. I want to believe it's a figment of their imagination. Maybe before now it used to be that um, uh, uh, everything should be politicized. But we are trying to move away from that now and face reality for COVID-19. Knows no barrier, has no barrier. COVID-19 knows no tribe, religion, or even political party. So in the composition of the organogram, from the ministerial level to the state level, to the area council level, the ward level, and the unit level. The structure is replicated across down to the grassroots. And this structure at the top level, I will still repeat to you that the CAN was asked to give also representatives of this structure. That will be the eye of the Christians in, the, in this exercise. Now the League of Imams also gave representatives. And this also will be the eye of the Muslims in the structure. Now the two political parties, the two strong political parties brought in representatives. Those will also represent and serve the interests of the politicians. The civil society been there already. Cutters for also um, the non-political people, non-indigenous people, and all the people that did not form within this uh, uh, group. And then you have the representatives of the youth and women. And then the gender is certified in that area. We have representative of the traditional rulers and the chieftain. That so, also so, speaks to uh, the Honorable people. Minister, apology to uh, Honorable Minister, apologies to Botin. Uh, my question essentially is to identify how you identified those who are in need of the polity. So are you just giving to every resident of FCT? Well, that takes us to again the function of the composition. Now, these people in each area council, ward, or unit identified their people. And in the area councils we are yet to go are still identifying their people. In each household that is marked, the people and the representatives, they are able to know who is actually eligible. And in that case, these houses are identified and collectively they agreed on serving those houses. And as you can see, as we do that again, there have been videotaped immediately and uploaded to the uh, 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 call center. We also have lines opened, supposing an eligible one is being uh, maligned from the exercise. He's also free to call the 
uh, Wazobia Radio or call the Berekete family, for he it is his entitlement and right. If he feels it's an infringement on his own fundamental human right and being deprived of getting this palliative, if he calls justice will be served. These houses are identified by their own leaders. And All right. No uh, so so an, another big question. Point. Yeah, sorry. Uh, apologies again. Uh, another big question, Honorable Minister, is that uh, are you giving out cash or money to uh, as, pal as part of the palliative measures? No, not at all. If we say even there is a lockdown, for instance, how do we now encourage the spending? They will not even have the market to go do the full purchase. So we are giving enough food that we know will serve the family uh, for a while. And we will resume again the same distribution and using the same pattern in the next week or two. And we'll continue to try to do this to, you know, uh, cushion the effect of sit at home as ordered by Mr. President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria uh, due to the pandemic uh, outbreak in Nigeria, especially in Federal Capital Territory. We will repeat this until we are certain that everyone is okay and god willing we know it will not last for too long okay should so it do, all should right it be uh, that be the case we will revisit all right so uh you mentioned that there are ngos who are working with you in the distribution of the palliatives are they doing this pro bono uh, or are you giving them money if you are how much are, you, are they collecting yeah. They are doing it pro bono. We have a group of volunteers, both from the CAN and from the uh, uh, Jibwees and from some other women uh, group like the NCWS and so many other groups that volunteer. And to this effect, we say thank you very much to them for this exercise only brought out the best, you know, attitude in Nigerians. Even in the city center, we have volunteers that are residents that are not even uh, uh, Nigerian citizens that are actually so interested in this exercise when they saw the organogram. And they All are right. joining the team to ensure that it is perfectly executed. Okay, so b b before you go, Honorable Minister, can you give us an, uh, an understanding of, we saw the back, uh, the packs of the palliatives that you're sharing. What is contained in that? If you can quickly give Nigerians understanding and how, can, how long can it sustain, for example, a family of four or six? Thank you very much, Mr. Shim. Uh, the, the bag of rice contains, once again, five kg of rice. And then the bag of condiment contains three kgs of semovita, three kgs of gari, two kgs of beans, ten sachet of tomato paste, uh, maggi cubes, a liter of granite oil, sugar, and salt. That is the composition of the uh, condiment bag. Honorable Minister for State of the SCT, Madam uh, Ramat Aliyu, sincere thanks for coming on tonight on the program. And thank you for giving insights and education to the SCT people on what you're doing. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. Thank you very much, Mr. Shim. We appreciate and thank you, viewers.